first blood. No. Oh, or not. Didn't you see me wait? Ну, похоже на то. Да, похоже на то. Вот он пеха. Вот она руна. И все, и долончики будут теперь. Все нормально. А можно фармить дальше. на 8. Мне кажется, у хвоста проблемы небольшие. Особенно учитывая то, что выходит лич и э, дает ногу с хайграунда. Конечно, хвост там курсу повесил и даже ластворд дал. Но мы видим, что ему май выживает. 100 хп у него остается. <coughs> так, ну и что у нас здесь внизу? Внизу у нас... Э... Уроки. Что-то он немножко так лизнул сзади Элдер Тайтана. О, пришел Никс! Никс пришел, и Никс не ошибается. Это фраг. Это фраг. Это второй фраг для команды ДК. И это минус Сайленсера в миде. Ну, Сайленсера в миде все и так очень плохо. 4 крип... Точнее, 9 крипов за 5 минут. Это реально маловато. И Дашкевичу там... Стоять легко и не дадут Там Лич продолжает по кулдауну кушать своих крипов Продолжает по кулдауну харасить Сайленсера Там Бёрнинг, который если захочет Просто с форма ворвется и пол лица Сайленсеру оторвет а, Ну и собственно говоря, вот тот Никс, который пришел И э, запорол, скажем, малину Вот он стоит Никс, Никс, Никс Ну и Муши Муши, Муши, Муши Шестой левел сейчас, кстати, получит шторм. И это тоже опасно. Вот от такого шторма уже можно и попасть. Причем не обязательно на линии. Уж такой шторм просто носит с собой телепортик. И все, как только начинается где-то заруба, сразу ТП с блинка, э, с блинка, с ульта залетел и начинаешь убивать. Учитывая то, что там тонкий сайленсер, там тонкий тинкер, э, тонкий леон, тонкая энигма, э, то шторм спири должен быть крайне эффективен. Конечно, у него будет хороший фарм. Так, что тут? Хвост. К хвосту подходит у нас Бёрнинг в очередной раз. Ну, пока что идет просто стандартный лайнинг, э, стандартная рутинная работа, суппорты фармят, э, фармилы фармят, э, ну или суппорты харасят, это такое уже в зависимости от лайна. Э, мидеры мидят... Все ровно, все очень.
Так что пока все стабильно. Команды не лезут. Команды не лезут, команды не хотят ядраться. Все прекрасно понимают цену ошибки. Ценой ошибки может быть вылет из турнира. Хотя сейчас вроде бы у ДК и у Нави на самом деле все более-менее хорошо. Сейчас на самом деле в большей, в большей степени идет битва за хорошее место. Потому что от того, насколько хорошее место ты займешь, зависит сколько ты денежек получишь. А теперь у Куроки проблемы. Вот он, вот он Шторм. Просто залетел с телепорта и ответил подачу. Заходит Дэнди. У Дэнди нет маны. У Дэнди нет маны, а тут Айсайсайс. И муж и муж и захиливается. Да, и вот что теперь делать? Дэнди бы, конечно, с радостью пошел. Сейчас э, начистил лица этим ребятам. Но сейчас выйдет шторм. Выходит шторм. Айсворд. Это не айсворд, это электрик вортекс. Ну, посмотрите, как много дамаги. Ну, хотя тут уже куроки, куроки. Блин, муж и муж и нету мана для того, чтобы улететь. Хороший импейл. С руки, с руки. А там сол ринг. А там сол ринг. И оказался уж торма. Что это за шарфи гейминг просто. Да уж, Soul Ring я не ожидал лично Soul Ring. Тут у нас Black Hole по одному Ланему. Ланем карапасирует, но карапасы не слишком сильно спасают, особенно первого уровня. Домой Ланем, ну а тут домой Дэнди. Хм, это не очень круто. Паник продолжает тут курсировать по топу. Айс 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 у нас заходит э, теперь сам на топ. Вниз у нас отправляется Жукс Ассасин. Да, я так понимаю, э, добирать э, опыт, потому что у него есть небольшие с этим проблемы. Но просто выходит и Монобёрн Дэндика, действительно. Чем ему мелочиться? И Муши здесь. Муши готов влетать. А, если сейчас Муши нападет, то... Так, пост. Курса уже четвертого уровня. Да, конечно. Посмотрите просто, что происходит с Бернингом. Просто пол столба только что сняла, но у Бернинга есть Ботл. И Ботл не прощает такого хараса. У Фаса, конечно, он тоже есть. Ну и по крипам мы видим Бернинг 40 на 25 и хвост 13 на 9. Линия, скажем, проиграна в хламину. Ну, так, если мягко выразиться. Просто нападение на хвоста. Хотя он такой плотненький достаточно оказался. Сайленсер, да, 4 брони, немало. А, и давайте еще посмотрим, что у нас на других линиях. На других линиях у нас есть Ice Ice Ice, у которого 6 уровень. У которого есть Soul Ring, тапок, кольцо регенерации. У него все прелестно. Есть Фаник, у которого тоже все, по большому счету, прелестно. Кроме того, что левела 6 у него нету. Но ему не так важно. Хотя, я думаю, там какой-нибудь вакуум бы не помешал. А, Пупей собирает мерку и... Пупи Меку эту соберет совсем-совсем скоро. А у Дэнди появляется тревела. 9.45, тревела. Хорошо. Нормальные, хорошие тревела. Быстрые. Проблема в том, что тут есть морф. Это реально проблема. Там говорят, Альянс выиграли у Cloud9, и они остаются в деле. Они вне зоны риска. На этот раз. У них-то еще там матчи остались. Шторм идет гангать или муж идет дофармливать? Вот в чем главный вопрос. Гангать он может, он может действительно попытаться принять фаника, но мне кажется, ему нужен хороший плюс. Фаник видит шторма, прекрасно видит шторма, и фаник не возвращается на линию. Давайте посмотрим, наверное, на графике спустя 10 с половиной минут. Мы видим, что Нави на 1000 золота впереди. И на 1000 с лишним опыта также впереди. Но есть проблема с тем, что вот Никс, например, сейчас совершенно спокойно дофармливает себе, дофармил уже Аркан Буци. Также у него уже есть шестой уровень. А это значит, что э, Виндетта и нужно теперь будет играть очень осторожно. На топе нападают. Напали на Муши. Муши через Глобал убивают. Хорошо. Четверо игроков нами на топе. Э, пятый у нас э, Сайленсер в миде так и остался. Просто Глобал прожал пост. И Нави отправляется в пуш или нет? Вышка очень битая. Нужно, нужно пытаться забирать сейчас этот тавер. Будут пытаться? Кажется, будут. Ну, ушел Титан. Ракеты по Айсайсу. Да, и был использован глиф фортификации, но я не думаю, что он сильно поможет. Единственное, для чего нужен глиф, это просто потянуть чуть-чуть времени. Бёрнинг нападает на поста, и хвост умирает. 
Вот, вот понимают, понимают ДК, ну, сразу виден э, класс команды, когда э, эта команда моментально реагирует на перемещение противника. Увидели, что враг ушел на топ, смотрят Сайленсер и видит, стоит, думает, ну, блин, а почему бы не убить этого Сайленсера? Вот смотрит, например, Дэнди ползет, почему бы не убить Дэнди? Потому что тут нюк с Виндети бегает, и Муша отлично реагирует, прыгает на э, Тинкера, Тинкер погибает и пошел Чейн Фрост, второй заряд, Чейн просто тоже в куроке, это минус три на ровном месте, и еще минус Тауэр, ДК! Ах, 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 как же это больно, как же это сейчас больно бьет по экономике Нави. Э, вопрос теперь заключается в следующем, воспользуются ли этим ДК так бы, так, как они бы воспользовались э, в случае игры э, не столь важной и... And even though Navi again takes tier one top, it ends up being DK that takes a tier one as well. We're 12 minutes in and still a very close game in both metrics, so not a whole lot of talking to be done about that. Let's take a look at item choices and item progression. Looks like Funic, he's got his ring of health up as well as a headdress, so potentially a pipe could be on the way for now. Definitely going for that pipe of inside against the line of, of DK. They have a Lich, they have a Storm Spirit, they have a Nuke Assassin. There's, those are three good heroes for, for pipe usage and then... Poppy has that mechanism up and running, and I feel this might be a very difficult game for Havos to play in. We saw him already being run down twice already, and with Nyx Assassin now being level 6... Actually, he's closer to level 8 now, but with him having Vendetta up, and then of course the Storm Spirit, it's so hard for a squishy intelligence hero like, like, like the Silencer to just stay anywhere on the map. He needs to stick to Poppy throughout the game. Looks like Mushi is not going to be rushing his Orchid. Instead, he picked up an Ogre Club. So very well could be a BKB. Watch Tinga on the bottom lane. Let's see Mushi's game sense. And Tanger Tanger immediately leaving as, as soon as he starts the match. Up at top. Radiant Tier 2 being threatened by Navi. That's where 4 are. Soon to be 5 as Zindi can teleport in very quickly. Tier 1 having a creeps cut now by DK. They've got two at top, trying to hold off or at least forestall this tier two push. Ice, ice, ice. There's that the Astral Spirit. There's going to be the Global Silence, and they're going to try to engage on the MMY. Down at bottom is also a fight breaking out. So it looks like the Russian machines will push them back. Back up at top, they won't be able to clean up MMY by the time all is said and done. The Global Silence spent, but only for one kill on Lich. It was actually a great read by uh, Wolves, great communication. Nyx Assassin and Stormtrooper on the bottom lane was jumping in for the Tinker, and as soon as they that happened, when they were running through the mass of the machines and about to kill Dendi, the Silence came out and there was nothing they could do and they had to back off. Mm -hmm. Time to Tier 2, still under assault. Okay. And I think Mushi was contemplating going for a fast Orchid, but after his his initial death to the Global Silence, he's instead going for the Ogre Club now. Yeah, yeah, I was mentioning that too. Like, he, he's actually had that Ogre Club for a while. Uh, the fact that it looks like he's going for a BKB first. Counter warding going on for Radiant's Navi at the moment, tier one. Oh, in great shape at bottom, so Dindy has done a, an excellent job of of making sure these tower trades, or at least tower damage trades, are favoring Navi, Puppy, again with his mech done, Kuro, kind of joke for the moment, but their joke kind of broke for the moment, but yeah, the, uh, and progression slowly but surely taking shape. Does this game just feels very slow paced to me compared to a lot of the other games we watched today? We are going to see some some pretty hefty mid game fights and especially late game. And I do believe this one will go as far as late game. I don't think that even with the pipe up on funny to watch Poppy now. Yep, they're going to engage onto him, Vendetta, and yeah, got Malifus, but the Earth Splitter comes out. Doesn't catch much, it's going to be the Earth Spike, trying to catch Lanham, Puppy turning it around now, MMY's right there, eats the finger of death, manages to make it away with very little health, he's got about 25 HP, and the Rockets oh, actually rock. aren't, in, nope, there they are, I thought he missed them, but was in vision, and brought down, so off of this, Navi, should Immediate have. reaction from Puppy on, on the Malifus, so quick, man. It wasn't by why Lanim didn't at least try to stun him, because he would have been standing right in the dead center of the Earth Splitter. I suppose the Malathus prevented him from even trying that, just because of the animation. To deny the tower as Lanim lands to make sure that happens. They did take the tier 1 at bottom, burning. Doing his farming down in that bottom lane as well. Running, completing his fight. Any second now. <laughs> Sitting on 26 on the I have such a big item. There we go. 
Such a big item. Definitely. Especially at this timing. 16 and a half minutes is pretty legit. So maybe they do want to push. Maybe this is sort of a uh, unconventional push strat from Navi. We'll find out as Funic moves back out onto the map. Ice, ice, ice. Only about 150 gold away from a mech of his own. Very important item for him to have. As, like you said, Navi has plenty of push power. And they certainly have the ability to take fights under the enemy tower. Will be a Scepter build, actually. Not a BKB build out of the post. As he's picked up his Staff of Wizardry now. And just wanting to boost up. The, uh, the ult? Yeah. How do you feel about that? you think it's the right choice? Yeah, I, I definitely think that a, a silencer with Scepter and then later on a Refresher is probably the most annoying thing in the world to play against. Mm -hmm. There's just nothing you can do about it. And you take so much damage as well because of how Curse of the Silence suddenly activates on you whenever Global Silence goes off because of that Scepter. See burning, getting close to the, his Lincoln Sphere. 500 gold, along with his Perseverance. And DK, doing a pretty good job of keeping the map spread and keeping their gold and experience efficiency high. Probably investing into a Gem of True Side rather than trying to go for a straight uh, Blink Dagger or Black King Bar. So they yeah. really want to play aggressive. He's running... He ran past a ward from DK. Uh, Bougie, gonna TP away Kuro's right there. There's the Hex to lead. And now... This is there as well with the Earth Spike. Another good kill. As Mushi's brought down before he can make any more progress towards his BKB, he actually doesn't have anything on the couriers. I think it's his Mithril Hammer lying in the base, though. Is it? Oh, meanwhile, the middle lane. Didn't even notice that. Mid, C, Zeiss, Zeiss, and Lana being pursued a bit, but. It's not like much is going to come of it. I want to point out the warding from DK. Very aggressive in the Radiant Jungle. One right at the top of the steps. That'll be expiring soon, but also this one near the, uh, near the top part of the lane. Dyer's top tower I don't know who has the, la the late game advantage. I guess it all comes down to who initiates better and what targets DK choose to, yep. to focus with their Storm Spirit and the Nyx Assassin. But it's definitely difficult for them to initiate on them just because of Kuroki obviously sitting with two great disables in hand, the Black Hole from Poppy, and most importantly, the Global Silence. I probably favor this for, for Na'Vi, however stupid that may sound, but. Well, I mean, it's tough because, like, I agree with you. Like, Navi's got a phenomenal late game potential, and man, I'm gonna be caught in the river now. And killed off quick, fast, and in a hurry. But, um, DK's got a lot going for them, too. I mean, Morphling and his late game potential can never be denied. The uh, Elder Titan is never gonna be bad with Natural Order, just never. And, you know, Lich does kind of fall off. That's probably the big thing. Like, Lich and Nyx, you know, the MPL's always nice, but Tinker ends up getting much, much better. But that's just it. I think Lion and, of course, Enigma, but also Darkseer scales a lot better into the late game than Nyx, Assassin, Lich, and then Elder Titan, despite Natural Order being so great. A little sloppy. Burning. Gonna be Black Hole, and here comes Mushi to try to turn this around. They're gonna be able to grab one. Puppy's gonna be blown up immediately. Bouncing back and forth. Mushi with Ice, Ice, Ice. Helping clean this up. Wow, he got up a Chain Frost that bounced quite far away. Funic and Dindy making a run through the woods as they finish off one more. That was... Kuro they caught up with in lane. So lose the Storm Spirit and Mushi ends up dying through it all, but they do get two. Yeah, I think that's a, a good fight for DK to take. What seemed to be a, a disastrous fight for, for Navi when focusing everything on the Morphling and him just strength morphing through it. You saw Poppy dedicating the black hole for him alone and not getting anything out of it. They did manage to get Mushi down and that's sort of okay when you trade your two supports for that. Everything used on the Navi side of things though, but that pipe really did work. All knotted up, 10 to 10. 20 kills in 20 minutes. And a slight lead currently in favor of Navi Goldwise experience going the other way. So 20 minutes behind us. What do you think the game plan's gonna be, Melk, looking ahead for the next 10 to 15? I think we're gonna see Burning build his uh, his regular Morphling without the Ethereal Blade. It's, I'm, I'm sort of torn on it just because of how low HP some of the targets on Navi is. On the other hand, because of that silence, especially as we go into the late game, maybe it is better for Burning to just have, you know, a satanic and a butterfly and just stand his ground and be a physical DPS only that doesn't really seem to care about being silenced up. Yeah, exactly. He's gonna be tanky, he can right-click like hell. If the Elder Titan were on the other side, for example, it'd be a problem. Like, Silencer plus Elder Titan would be 
the ultimate anti uh, anti morphling combination. But he's got the ET on his side, so he doesn't even need a whole lot a lot of items either on himself or on others like a Deso to reduce armor or whatever. That's not going to be the issue at all. So once he's attacking fast and he has a little bit of innate survivability, he's going to be able to really blow up uh, the lion, for example, and probably the silencer as quick as he would if he did exactly. Enough. I wish DK would uh, allocate some farm for MMY though, because he's going to have a very hard time surviving in any of these fights if he stays on 700 HP throughout. He only has brown boots, well, and a, ma and a magic stick. Invis rune, bottled up by Mushi. Now they're going to yeah, double back. And there's a three targets not far from them now. Kuro, Funic, and Havost. Tower is under attack. They actually decide to go top instead of down through and in front of the tier two. They're going to take a shot at Dindy. Better get there quick, though. They have a general idea of where he is, and... Oh. Yep, now they're going to spot him. him. Now they he see him. Oh, wow. Nope, they're going to jump, and nope, they got an eye on him. Dindy in trouble, and brought down. Anytime you can kill a Tinker, especially at this stage of the game, when he's particularly hard to catch up with. And let's take him to kill. Good for you, MMY. <laughs> He's actually building a... Kill uh, secured, man. It seems Dyer's as if he's going to build a pipe. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, too. Looks like he's got... He had Dyer's two Ringer Regents. I think he sold one and bought a TP instead. Two Ringer Regents and a Ring of Health. And Lanham spots Kuro. Ernie's right there with him. Puppy doing what he can. Trying to drive by Meg. Not going to work. Kavos hits the... Double uh, Curse of the Silent. But Lanham left behind. Burning ships are starting on the Impale. Radiant's yep, they're going to get him anyway. Intelligence stolen by Havos there, and he is continuing to build out. However, this whole time, DK has been pressuring the top tier one. They have it down to about half health. However, the rotation of Puppy should be enough to stop it. Oh, yeah, that's probably one of the ultimate late game heroes to have right silencer. If this goes really, really deep, which a lot of DK games do, Havos on that silencer can get so smart. Mm -hmm. He's stolen four intelligence so far. Yep, Dyer's looks that way. And only gonna get worse. And that scepter, very, very close now. Very close. Radiance Only it's about 300 gold. Attack. So, taking a look at how things have panned out KD-wise, obviously Burning is looking fantastic. He's at 5-0. and oh. Puppy's been a playmaker as well. 4-1. 4-3 four and one. Four and three for Mushi, so a bit up and down. Phonic on the Dark Seer. Told you it was sick. He's 3-0. and oh. And after that, though, four deaths already on Havos. So, even though he has managed to steal a little bit of intelligence, he's still playing a little bit from behind. Ice on size, because 2300 gold, yeah. Navi sticking together for the most part, taking no chances and just letting Dindy bounce around the map. They might smoke here because they've got four up on the high ground. Almost very close to his Aghanim Scepter though. But yeah, both teams seem sort of equally aggressive. Mm -hmm. Navi more so as a team, whereas DK is trying to, to find the pick off through the Storm Spirit and of course... The next assassin. They got the silence off on him. Mushi couldn't make much of it. Burning is going for a Thero Blade. Yep. Go set off on him. 2,000 gold. Let's see how dedicated to the defense they happen to be. Ice Ice Ice. Use that Astral Spirit. Force them back and successfully does so. They try to go up and put the top tower. Dendi is there to defend it though. I was gonna say, it looks like DK is really okay with just making space and letting Navi push. And the levels on on the team seem sort of even, aside from Burning, who's now 15. Actually, Mushi on the Storm Spirit is 14, whereas the highest level on Navi is probably on at level 13 Enigma. So a bit of an edge in terms of experience for DK. That are now completed on the Silencer. Both teams seem really, like, they, this is very much a chess match kind of a game. We're not seeing a whole lot of just overt aggression. Both teams are falling back and playing ultra-defensive, but then when they do get aggressive, it's very, very laser-focused. They know exactly where they want to go yeah, and what they want to do. Doing a little drawing of which path he would like them to take. We see the Black King Bar completed on Mushi on the Storm Spirit, now going for the Orchid. Continuing the dance round, might be able to spot enough Lanham actually got eyes on them. They're going to know what it was, but Sentry goes down a little bit too late as Lanham skitters to safety up on the high ground. We're probably going to see each and every member of DK eventually trying to grab a Black King bar, even the lids if it goes that late. Mm. Oshi in this. Sees Kurogi, that's going to go for a kill. See? Yep. I thought. He's checking things out, making sure no one else is around. Shame they are. He's not going to get this, I don't think. Nope. Oh, wow! There's a 
Tackle is going to be off the mark. And Mushi able to make it way behind that. We can see, yep, vacuum back on the ice, ice, ice. There's going to be the impale. Excuse me, the earth spike. And Dindy trying to follow up and does manage to use that dagger to bring down the buck. So Kuro actually gets another kill using that finger of death as well. And what looked to be perhaps an easy kill for Mushi turns into a three for nil exchange. Puppy may have whiffed on the black hole, but doesn't really matter. They got the job done anyway. Yeah, Mushi played that perfectly too. He was waiting out the global silence, used BKB immediately after, and then used his ultimate to get away from the black hole that didn't hit on anyone. And despite that, Navi won three to zero. And now Mushi is caught out without mana. Oh, wow. Mushi spotted, jumps across, he has no mana now. And can they catch him? There's rockets that do connect. And someone trying to track him down, that's gonna be Puppy along with Funic. Funic with that blink dagger up. Can he get the, no, 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 never mind. He's gonna say, can he get the vacuum? Then he goes, nope, I got laser beams, it's fine. So four kills for Navi and nothing for DK. All because he wanted to kill a lion one Ethereal Blade is completed on burning though. So. Well, at this point, though, like, what worries me is how as how much that helped Dindy in particular. I mean, he's got 1,200, almost 1,300 gold st uh, stashed away. Yeah. Havost has his uh, scepter done now, and even Puro benefited a lot from that. He's got 1,100 gold um, stashed away as well, so that's actually just kind of a big deal across the board. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, the biggest lead in the game, granted, wasn't much. It was about 1,500, but totally a race now in favor of uh, in favor of Nam. I'm very excited to see what happens once... Burning joins the fight and starts using his, his ethereal blade against Kuroki and Dendi, who's got Finger of Death and Dagon and soon and own their own ethereal blade as well. We're gonna see a lot of heroes go down very fast. Looks somebody just circled Dyer's Roshan. That would have been, been Kuro. And looks like they're gonna move across that way, suspecting that maybe that's what's <laughs> going on. Poppy now finishing his back king bar. A very important item for him. Definitely, 1400 HP on him now, and only the Chain Frost to stop him from yep. unleashing the black hole on everyone. If, if they could just wait for the Lich to die, or for the Chain Frost to be used preemptively. Yeah, Lich is a very easy target, target almost a sitting duck with those 750 HP. Yep. What you're saying, needs to tank himself up a bit. But no, not very survivable. So with that last team fight, Navi's definitely pulling ahead now. Even with burning, picking up a lot of farm. Well, the comple honestly, the complexion of this game has, even though the kills will tell you, it's like 27 kills, 29 minutes, whatever. That's fairly action packed. But everything just feels so. I think the pressure is beginning to be felt by these teams. Like, oh, both of them. One mistake will turn the, the game around completely. You see, Isis is now completing his Black King bar as well. Both teams starting to pick up the items they need to survive through these engagements. Of course, Navi with that pipe. I'm gonna make the difference. We see Havost picking up a cloak on top of that. He really do not want to go down to anyone. <laughs> like you said, BKB is the item of the day. Navi, smoking through the dire side jungle now. Not gonna find anyone home, but certainly will find an opportunity to plant some wards. Lanham signal right on top of them. They're gonna double back to Roshan. They think that's where they are. Smoke almost expires, getting dangerously close to the DK lineup now. Beware is gonna spot them out. And DK just gonna pull back. Playing very, very safe. They are letting Mushi free farm bottom, at least for the moment. Blink Dagger is gonna be done on the Nyx, so very important item for him and his ability to serve as initiator, or at least secondary initiator to Mushi. Letting him start the fight, so would probably be off. Oh, look at Puppy. Yep, Puppy slept, but not engaged upon. The pipe has been deployed by Navi, though. All this time, did he just continuing to split push top of it? Yeah, this means Navi's gonna retreat for now. They don't wanna run any risk, and, and therefore they need the pipe to be activated in, in the fight. DK obviously just waiting it out after use it. So another 40 seconds before we'll see an engagement break out, unless Navi, of course, picks up burning on the top lane now. Yeah, burning should be safe. DK is right behind them, though. He'll run right out and get spotted. There's the vacuum and the link is just popped. Follow up the chain stun. There's going to be a chain frost that comes out, but the black hole will secure the kill. However, Earth Splitter helps to reset the fight some. Can they follow it up? Mushi going to engage in. Havos, though, 
Ah, uh, looks like they're just gonna let him go. Not liking the idea of fighting around this march of the machines, and again, that's just the control that a tinker offers you. So, Burning ends up taking a spill, and looks like he, yeah, he bought back. So a bit, big waste of money, and he contributed nothing to the uh, secondary side of that fight. Yeah, and both BKBs popped on DK as well, and Mushi does doesn't have any damage output. Nope. Especially not when there's a pipe up on, on Navi. So great play by Navi, just forcing any kill they can get, and then a buyback, and just assuring their gold lead. Do you think the BKB now, in retrospect, was the right call on Mushi, going defensive instead of aggressive first? Yeah, I think he de uh, desperately needed to, and that's why the silence pick is so, is so great coming out from Navi, because they force Mushi to build defensively, and even then, not being able to do anything about the Navi lineup. Roshan being engaged now by DK, that dire side advantage being put to good use moment looks like Navi either is unaware or has no worries they're aware now it should be anyway had no one gone for the orchid rather than than the BKB straight away he would have just been cannon fodder in any fight as soon as he'd blink in he just beat the sacred by either cool oh wow or... puppy trying to follow the astral spirit back on it right back to the roach pit died and wasted a BKB charge on top of everything else Really bizarre sequence there for him. Usually his judgment's so good that he was literally just following an astral spirit back to where he knew the Elder Titan was going to be sitting. And turned out there was a whole team that just cleared up an H's. What was he doing there on his own? He literally was following the astral spirit. He was just going like this. Interesting. Yeah. But, weird decisions aside, it's a kill DK is going to be very happy to have taken. Take a look at the net worth. Navi is in a much better position across the board, but number one on the map is the Morphling. So Tinker right behind him. It's not as if Dindy's going to be in danger of becoming irrelevant. But are building into a Black Bar as well, so as I was saying, a lot of BKBs this game. Let's see what Lanham is going for. He's got that Blink Dagger. Still think he'd be wise to get a Black King Bar as well, <laughs> just because Impale, Mana Burn, Spike Carapace, he's not going to be able to use any of them in the fight. Right. So take a look at a boast. He hasn't really tacked on much following the completion of his scepter. He's kind of got a yard sale going on. Got a Null Talisman, some Boots of Speed, and a uh, Oblivion Staff, and of course his uh, casual cloak. He's just, just building into a refresher ult. Yep. Once that's done, it's going to be incredibly hard for DK to win a team fight if, if, if they don't pick him up first. Rookie closing up on a Blink Dagger. Poppy also a thousand gold off his blink, blink dagger, and I think Navi would benefit a lot from getting a blink dagger. Look at this though, Lanim, almost close enough to Poppy. Very very close. Oh. Poppy has help. There we go. There it is. Puppy for the second time in about as many minutes ends up dying, just walking through the wrong part of the map. They gone, and Blink picked up off of that, and the rest of Navi wanting no part of it as they fall back. I was trying to farm top, and that's the that's the problem with having a Tinker in your lineup. Gonna take a lot of that farm away from you. Last hit, bro. It's easy. We got almost all. Anyway, down to bottom. DK now taking attack. that pick and trying to transition Radiant it into a tier two. And it looks like they should be successful. That tower only has half health. Glyph has been used, but still quite a ways until Puppy. Back at the ready to fight. Most actually had to cancel his TP and Mushi fallen. now has a, his completed orchid on in his stash at home. Such an important item. They need that so badly, not just for the silences that are that are essential for bringing down heroes like uh, the Tinker in particular, but also like the uh, the Lion. Yeah, now they're building a four staff or a Yule scepter, but I'm, I'm assuming it's going to be a four staff. Yeah. Technically, it could also be a Dagon, <laughs> but still thinking it's going to be a four staff. Smoke now out of Navi. Move up mid lane. Doesn't look like they're heading towards anywhere that has anyone in the immediate vicinity. They may be able to catch someone in the jungle if and when they cross the river. Still a very close game. Definitely favoring Navi once this goes into a 5 on 5, but they haven't been able to push that for the past five minutes. Instead, Poppy has died twice, and of course, Aegis is going the way of DK. Gonna help burning a lot in these engagements, and he now completed his Black King bar as well. So that's a total of three BKBs on the DK lineup. Special Spirit walking his way through, and actually, yeah, didn't hit anyone. Puppy barely able to dodge it. Navi, though, will be spotted by this ward. Defensive ward placed by DK, so they know. Yep, now, now they know. And Mushi is going to go for it. 
See, Curl off by himself ends up dying, and that's going to be a blown ultimate from Havos. They're oh, not going to be able to do anything with this, and this is a problem because they're going to be able to fight around this very effectively. Two minutes that's on cooldown, and he's surged to safety. Otherwise, he probably would have died behind that after the Ethereal Blade. But that Aegis is still up, and that's going to be a long time that DK doesn't have to worry about that ultimate being available. Now he's actually going back in. This is bold. Bold. Let's see if they're willing to commit. Work it now done and actually in the inventory of Mushi. There is no blink deck on Poppy and they desperately need that that little edge to, to get in on the on DK. Otherwise it's always gonna be on DK's premises that they just have the storm spirit jump on them, even burning on the morphling with the with the wave into Ethereal Blade and then of course the Nyx Assassin. If he sneaks in through Vendetta. Yeah. By Lennon, yep. And there's going to be the impale to follow up the Vendetta and burning there to secure the kill using the E-Blade. Well executed from DK and another very high priority kill. And this game is slowly running out of the hands of Navi. Slowly but surely though, four pickups now from, from in, in favor of DK. Navi used the, the silencer. Almost caught at top. Orchid's shown off, there's gonna be the pipe from Funic though. Will that be enough? Yeah, Poppy showing his face should be enough. And now he's gonna be stopped. He has the BKB just to secure his own escape. So Mushi getting a little ahead of himself. Earth Splitter a little optimistic. Doesn't catch much of anything, but... Yeah, he doesn't really do anything when once that uh, pipe goes off. Yeah. He's now down to a six second BKB. Once that hits four, it's not going to take much for Navi to just kite him around for a little bit. Got other items. items. Where Aegis will be reclaimed in about 30 seconds. Lanham, got a four staff of his own to go with his blink dagger. Got a staff of wizardry. MMY actually completing the pipe of inside now on the ledge. Up, Lanham. They have got an eye on Oh, oh no, spotted. You said that gem, paying for itself right off the bat. Missiles and Phonic there. Trying to finish him off, but PKB keeping ice, ice, ice up and standing. Navi, Navi was ahead. about to black hole, but thought better of it seeing MMY right next to the other side. Yeah. Again, he's not afraid of committing a black hole to one hero. Bottom lane is pushed far in, so Dendi has some cleaning up to do. There is a dig on three on him. Speaking of Dendi, like you said, that burst getting huge. Dagon, E Blade. And some squishies on the side of DK. Aegis now expired on burning, but he's sitting on 4k gold now. He's probably gonna build into Asgardi. <laughs> Might be a man to start as well though. <laughs> MMY gonna be caught by Kuro and company. Up on the high ground, not even sure how he got there to be de to be deftly honest with you. I'm gonna imagine Phonic vacuumed him there. Yeah, exactly. But uh, anyway, another nice kill going the way of Navi. Both of these teams, I mean, they're giving up kills here and there, and they are taking their shots. But still, this just feels like such a deliberate and directed kind of an effort on both sides. Yeah, we still haven't had that major team fight that just leaves everyone dead. It's just been a few pickoffs here and there. We started out by DK getting four pickoffs, and then now. Are we getting two on DK's side with Elder Titan and the Lich dying? Ice, 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 halfway to a side of ice. The waiting on the hex, as you said. Side of ice would be just gigantic for them if they could get it. It's one more way to lock down the Tinker, because the Tinker is going to grow to be more and more of a liability as the game goes on. And net worth wise, he is behind the Morphling, but he just offers something. So different from what the Morphling offers. Yeah, it's and Hovos now completed his Perseverance as well, so all he needs is just the recipe, and he's got a Refresh Orb as well. And that, I don't know, that spells Doom to me. But he's still, still haven't picked up any items since his Black Kings about 10 minutes ago. Here we go, gonna jump right on him. Puppy, maybe brought down, and nope, gonna be able to turn around and grab two with the Black Hole. Well placed, but brought down before he can get the full channel off. Hovos is there trying to hang and bang, but the follow-up from DK a little too strong. They should be able to track down Sonic as well. As Burning notches a triple kill through all the chaos, gives him the old okie doke because a double back around and will successfully do so. Dendi really never got involved in that fight. Tardy to the party, did what he could, but another big win going the way of DK. Well, hello, Natural Order, and this was the big yeah. team fight that we had been waiting for, but once they blew their two big ultimates, namely the, the Black Hole and the Global Silence, there was really nothing else for them to do. Yeah, dead, he's dead. That's just, that's just good sense. That's just knowing, I, I don't see if he walked past his ward or not, 
spot, just guessing right, figuring where Denny was going to be, and now that makes four down. He's down for 50 seconds, and I doubt he's going to buy back if he even can. Um, it's a, a uh, relevant question because it doesn't look like he can anyway. So the problem with this was that the black hole got off and it was a fairly good black hole as well, but both yep. heroes in the black hole had activated their blacking bars and yep. there's no real physical damage output from Navi. Yep. There was even a wall up, but it didn't really do much in, in that particular fight. And they, DK almost looked unscathed in that fight, yep. aside from MMY. I completely agree with you. They're just, the, the, the follow up isn't there. And that's what's kind of my question coming into this is where's the damage going to come from under the right circumstances? I mean, DK's never going to have much of a problem with that outside of Magic Community, but even then, the Morphling is sufficiently big now with 6,700 gold in his inventory that he should have no problem hitting hard very, very soon. Whereas with Na'Vi, they're kind of relying on the Tinker to just go crazy, but that hasn't been the case. 5-5-7, five, five, and seven, uh, mediocre at best performance out of Dindy. Yeah, he hasn't really been able to pick up some of those big kills. He's had a very lethal inventory, but only in one of these fights have we actually seen him been active. And then Lanham has picked him up twice now, if not thrice. But that's the power of DK's lineup. They have two heroes that so easily can pick three heroes. I still I keep forgetting about the Morphling. So yep. three heroes that so easily picks up heroes around the map. And then, of course, in the 5-on-5, five five, the natural order is just... I can't underline just how strong that ability is. Well, a problem that, that Navi's going to begin to face very soon, and they're already feeling, is the level disparity. Morphling's level 23. Compare that to Enigma, who's the highest on Navi at 17. So six level difference between the highest on Navi. Nice is now completing his Scythe of Vice. Navi's trying to force the push to no black hole, though. Up, Dindy. Right on top of Mushi. Mushi has to BKB and run. And should be able to make it back to safety, at least for the moment. Yeah, I think DK is going to be wise to just leave this tower. Mushi is pushing on top tower, and he's not going to stop, though. Lanham is right behind him. There's two gems, one of them each. Now we actually have to go back instead of pushing the tower. Yep, they really can't afford to just stay and try to, and tra try to trade hardware. It's not going to work. They sent back Kuro, but sent back a couple more just in case. 18 to 20, DK. Avoiding the push once again. Quite a sizable lead for DK, actually. 10,000 gold and 25,000 experience. And again, that's reflected in the levels charges. And they the physical damage output from Ice 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 going into these fights is not going to be something to scoff at. Once as Astro Spirit goes through them and he stands in the midst of it, it all with natural order, it's BKB on. He's going to hit for 250 damage at least per hit. You called it early that this looked like one was going to go late, and I agree with you. We're at 45 minutes in, and we still have Tier 2 Tower standing. The was trying to finish that refresh orb. Oh, I have a lot of respect for that item, but the way DK is playing this, um, I might be wrong. Maybe that's not a problem for them at all. Okay, moving as a foursome down through bottom. Lanham, the only one not there. He's looking to make something happen on his own. Near mid and near top lane. Lanham has been very good at scouting out where Dendi would be hiding. Now waiting, waiting for his relatives to come off cooldown. He's still not 16. Ooh, he doesn't have a TP scroll either. Looks like DK. I thought they might be willing to try to shove in bottom and immediately, immediately collapse to mid, but... Oh, Burning completed a butterfly. I didn't even notice that. He's sitting on 3,500 gold and a wow. butterfly. Yeah, well, I saw that he had 7,000 gold, but you're right. He is rather large and hitting for 300 plus damage in auto attacks with insane attack speed. And this is that issue again. Like, where's the damage for Navi? We know exactly where it is for DK. And honestly, Navi is just going to have a hard time accounting for him, barring some kind of a major mess up. On yeah, the, the only one that could take him down is Dendi on the Tinker. So right now, they don't have the physical damage output. They're never going to have the physical damage output to take down Burning, especially not when he has a Butterfly yeah. that, that provides him with 35% evasion. So it's all in the hands of Tinker. Well, both teams really dodging each other for the most part. And again, this has had just such a different feeling for both teams this game. I mean, usually you have these chess dances going back and forth that will be just for Burning right there, so a little disappointing for Na'Vi, I'm sure. But both teams really only engaging whenever they really care to. They're not giving a lot of openings for them to be caught out. You're not seeing a lot of marauding around the map and 
trying to only do things with packs of one and two. Instead there of is a lot on the line for this match. Oh, yeah. Winning this almost effectively secures your spot in the third phase. Yep. For DK, it does. For Navi, they still really need at least one more to feel super safe about it. But this is how I, I think we can expect the games to look. Moving ahead, especially as the, as today gets later and we move towards our last bit of phase one, or phase two, excuse me. We've already seen wow. how teams get more and more desperate in some of their matchups. Alliance, most notably, when they tried for the ro level, rose, level one rose attempt mm -hmm. and ended up feeding away five kills and wasting the Aegis as well. Was that against DK? Uh, I honestly don't remember. After a while, they all start to run together. But, uh... DK, just continuing to farm their own jungle. Let's talk. I mean, you look at the Morphling, he's basically six-slotted now. He's not going to have the Aegis forever, but he is quite huge. On the side of Na'Vi, do you think of... Well, I mean, honestly, as soon as I ask it, I was going to say, do you think of Osis is where he needs to be? He's not. Like, there's just... I mean, it's nice having Axe Refresher, that's a big deal, but his item development, uh, other than that, has been truly garbage. Uh, yeah, and and that's the problem. They have to rely solely on, on Dendi right now. And then Bobby, he's sitting on 3k gold. He doesn't have a Blink Dagger. I think a, a lot of times throughout this game, a Blink Dagger would have offered a lot for, for Na'Vi lineup, and we still haven't seen a proper combo coming out from Phonic and Poppy yet. They have the most potent 5-on-5 five five combo. There is a blink tag off on Phonic and has been for the past 30 minutes or so. Oh, well, yeah. 20 minutes at least. So the Vacuum Black Hole combi has been... It's been... They've been able to pull it off if they wanted to, but it's much, much easier once Poppy gets that blink tag off and going as well. It doesn't seem as if he wants to commit to one. But I'm not completed on the Mushu though. So yep. he's, he's getting increasingly big and... That's what I was thinking. That Bloodstone coming out marks... Basically, that tells you that Navi's kind of on a timer now. Like, they can't just let DK continue to spiral like this. Morphling's just gonna get... Uh, well, I mean, honestly, he's pretty much 6 slot. There's not a whole lot he could do. He could re... BKB, I guess, but... <laughs> yeah, well, once that Aegis goes off, he's probably gonna invest into... Uh, I'm, I'm guessing a Satanic knowing Burning. Yeah. He really likes to go for that item instead of the Skadi or the Mentor style. Radiance oh, goes a Tier 2 for free. Fallen. And Na'Vi has no interest in defending as they stay nestled. There's not really much reason for him to go for a Satanic in this particular lineup, though. He's not really competing with I'd anyone over physical damage. So he's yeah, Scotty, I think, would be yeah. a lot better here. And he's got his BKB. He's got, like, Scotty just kind of rounds things out. I mean, you're not going to see a butterfly come out, so you don't need an MKB. Crit, you could if you really, really were that concerned about it. But honestly, I just feel like the overall benefit of going Scotty is gigantic whenever there is no true right-clicking hard carry hero that's going to develop anything worth a damn. Mm -hmm. uh, Vos right now is just, again, ages behind where he needs to be. He's, he's behind even Puppy at this point, and Puppy has not had uh, the best game sitting at 5, 4, and 7. Even a Mensa style wouldn't, would st still not be... Just to have those illusions sort this out some damage as well. Especially just uh, assigning them to Kuroki. He's sitting on 900 HP and... Uh-oh. Here we go, they're gonna jump right on Havost. Can they get him? There's the Vortex, can he get it off? Yes, the Earth Splitter was there, but Burning able to clean it up, and now Mushi and Lanham on the charge. Puppy will be able to make it away. Funnick trying to surge away. Kuro's there to try to help. Kuro probably just killed himself trying to save his buddy. Never mind, able to blink. Blinks across the river, and Lanham looking to catch up with him one way or another. Let's see if they'll be able to get anyone. Nope, Funnick a little too quick. And Kuro heading down top lane. Off of this, though, with the silencer down for 40 seconds, they may decide to go ahead and push mid. They've got a creep wave already set up. We just went from the top lane to the middle lane in in, in the manner of 5 to 8 seconds, I think. Yep. So many blink daggers and, of course, the ball lightning coming out from the storm spirit. 9,000 gold right now on this more blink. Avos does not have by them. So if they decided to push, he would have to wait the full duration. Doesn't look doesn't look like they're willing to take that chance right now. Oh, no, Mushi was it. getting sort of low on mana. He's getting... He, he has a four second duration Black King Bar now as well. So yeah. he really... They need to time it on the silence so each and every time. And it's going to be increasingly harder, especially as Navi gets more aware of the fact that all DK needs to do is focus down her walls. So Poppy's just going to stay in, in his immediate vicinity. He actually wasn't that fight, but I don't know what happened. Maybe he wasn't close enough. I think if, if Poppy had locked down the Storm Spirit in, in that fight and Havos had been able to get off both Global Silences, it might have looked differently. Remember, uh, we still had Phonic with the Vacuum and the Wall of Replica up, and he has a Scepter. That's where their physical damage output is gonna come from. They're gonna make DK their own enemies. Go, Tinker coming in. 
And Mushi was hanging around under cover of an invis. The rest of his team's all spread out, though. Okay, golden ice, ice, ice as well. So much gold on DK. Yep. Hey, even MMY is picking up items. An overclub on him and 1300 gold. Well, at this point, it definitely feels like it's DK's game to win or to lose. Navi continues to play very, very cautiously. And DK honestly not willing to push their advantage unless they're 100% sure they'll be able to get a lot out of it. Roche is going to be back up in a few minutes, so we may honestly just see them decide to wait this Roshan out. Hmm, a person burns on Ice Ice Ice. And Mushi is able to make it away. Perseverance on Ice Ice Ice, is that what you said? Yeah, I don't know. Lincolns? I think Refresher Orb is out of the question. Lincolns would be decent also because he can just put it on the right. Storm Spirit when he jumps in. Exactly, that's what I was thinking. And, and then of course, I don't know, just your your everyday casual battle group. Up did the engage by Lana, man. There's going to be an Earth Splitter that will get the job done. So they managed to pick Tinker off all by his lonesome. He does have buyback. And last thing he wants to do is have to use buyback. Oh, going for a side of ice. He's not going to get that blink dagger. He's just building straight into more disabled. They do need more disabled, so it's an it's an understandable item pickup. Still though, that blink dagger. <laughs> that dagger. And speaking of, no, it's going to be yeah, it's going to be that Lincoln spear. Yeah. Picked up on ice, ice, ice. Yeah, that makes that that, that makes so much sense. <laughs> yeah, you can I use it on. I would have been very need. surprised if he went for a battle for it. Oh, if he gone like, if he gone refresher, get the the, the dual earth splitters going. Would have been some great chaotic fights. Oh, it would have been. Uh, dude, earth splitter has by far the best sound effect in Dota. It does actually cancel black hole, does it? Does it? I actually don't know it, that it, at all. It, it, sort of, it sort of seems to me as if it does. I mean. It defies all logic to me that it should. Right. But in, in some of these fights, it looks as if it does. I honestly couldn't tell you. You're the pro, man. Be the analyst. Puppy caught. Don't have to analyze much to know. That's bad news. Instantly and buys back. Oh, they actually used the pipe, too. Global number one is used. And there's going to be the BKB. They pick up Kuro for free. And now Burning coming into his own. Puppy's going to black hole here. But there's the Chain Frost to knock him out of it. And DK. Ready to close this one out, it would seem. Burning is a gigantic right now. Yeah, and Mushi hung on to his Black King Bar so long in that fight. There was a lot of heart, by the way. We were talking about what item he was going to get. He got a heart. He oh, has interesting. 5,100 health right now. It has more agility than the Scotty Woods. I... Actually, I'm not even sure about that. Because he obviously he can morph it back and forth. No, I, I still think Ion Scotty would have been a better pickup. Right now. He's hitting pretty hard, and we're going to have them engage again. Havost is there. Already used his ulti once and refreshed. It just doesn't matter. Funny. Caught from behind and burning, cleaning that up as well. This is probably getting close to your GG moment. Yeah, there we go. Honestly, that was that was a kind of a weird game to watch and cast because it was very passive and huge and huge moments for a couple of big fights. But, but for the most part, it felt like both teams just dodged each other because they had an idea of where they wanted to go. But in the end, when they did clash, DK came out a little too much ahead in each turn, and uh, they ride that. To now we sort of went on a mission with a very brave idea. They couldn't really f seem to make it work though, and there wasn't this ultimate execution where they combine global silence, black hole, and and of course the vacuum. And several times we saw Poppy being disrupted by the Litz ultimate, who technically should have been silenced. Yep. Well, Great play by DK, nonetheless. No, I, I showing why they are still one of the best teams in the world. Just a stable team, 